Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on the TNL today. Um, we are in the the last home stretch here with the SRS segment. Joining me today uh, is Evan Chung. Evan, thank you so much for hopping on to share with us this morning. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. This is a privilege. Yeah, well, we're excited to hear what you have to say. You um, are a fantastic, well-rounded agent who really does business in all facets um, of the industry and what our license actually allows us to do, right? Not just focused on one uh, vertical of business. And so I just want you to share with agents today, you know, um, I'll ask you a few questions and then you can add in what you think is valuable for our new agents to hear. Um, but how long have you been uh, in the industry or with Family First Life? I got into the industry about four years ago. Um, I got in Family First Life just over two years ago. Okay, so 2021, probably? Yeah, twenty uh, mid-2021. Okay. Uh, um, and did you uh, did you start writing, you know, annuities, IUL, things of the SRS division right away, or did it take you some time? When did you find your first opportunity? Well, when I came into Family First Life, um, it was a little different here, right? We we run a lot of leads, and so I said, you know, let me let me run this system and try this out, and I had I had success. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I utilized my first, it, it literally, I'll be honest, it took me almost twelve months. But for the first twelve months, I think I was just trying different ways to find out my niche, right? So mm -hmm. I was trying different lead vendors, trying final expense versus mortgage protection, different scripts, and so. I, I kind of took my time, if you will. It, I certainly, looking back, could have done it um, much more quickly. But um, once I figured out kind of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. uh, it all took off for me last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so about a year in, and and what do you think the shift was like? What and so is a year ago? Is it safe to say that's when you really started kind of writing all areas of business? Yeah. So one big thing I did is I expanded my business from focusing primarily on final expense and a little bit of mortgage protection to including all four, right? And adding IULs and annuities and then expanding on that mortgage protection. So then I was real, for me, I was playing on all four quarters of the, you know, mm -hmm. of the game. So um, that was a big thing for me, uh, not limiting myself. Mm -hmm. um, also just gaining a lot more proficiency, which leads to confidence. So that was a big deal because, you know, when you're not confident in an area, you're really not willing to go that route. Um, so opening up the IUL conversation in the middle of a final expense appointment can be a little daunting. Uh, mm -hmm. But if it's the right product, then of course, that's where you should be going. So that that helped me a lot. Yeah. And and I would say, you know, uh, the confidence thing, uh, it, do you think it's fair to say that a lot of agents um, think that those products are maybe too complicated and, and that's why they're they're fearful of bringing up the conversation? And then do you think they're they're too complicated or was it just not comfortable because it was foreign and you just didn't know what they they were about? Yeah, I mean, I think when you're starting off in the industry, I think learning the final expense and the mortgage protection products are going to be obviously a little bit simpler than an IUL or annuity. Um, but the 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 IULs and annuities are not complicated products. They're definitely more versatile and have a lot more variables to, to deal with. But it's nothing that uh, people can't learn. Um, but when you do, you're really kind of unlocking a big part of this industry in your license using that. So for me, it was a matter of spending extra time learning those products. Right. Instead, like I'd go to the gym instead of listening to music. I, it sounds weird, but I was watching podcasts on IULs. And stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm calling carriers and then tell them, hey, explain to me how this IUL is better than that IUL or, or just explain to me IUL. So mm -hmm. um, I had to invest some time into that. Right. Yeah. And then, then it's experience. It's just like in final expense. I mean, I started off with two or three carriers in the very beginning, I think week one. Um, next thing I know, I had four or five carriers. And so then I had to learn their products, right? Mm -hmm. you know, where to click and what to do. Um, it's no different. And I think it's uh, your results will come as a reflection of your effort that you put into the, to the business. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to invest in yourself. You have to commit to learning a little bit to go a long way. Do you, do you think you waited to to write something till you knew it all? Or were you still willing to learn, learn as you went? Uh, I definitely was willing to learn as I went. I think my first appointment took me almost two hours. It was a final expense appointment. I think I called my my uh, my my mentor like five times during the appointment. I spent it the whole time and I closed it, but it, woo, it was rough. Um, yeah, you know you can't be scared to start, or you'll never start. I mean, it's anything foreign is going to be a little bit um, you know nerve wracking. So I'd say you know jump in, learn. Um, you'll see that clients are actually really patient with us. Mm -hmm. uh, those that are the right clients that are wanting to do business. So you know I, I feel like it's a mixed bag, right? You have to come in with some level of proficiency. You've got to invest a little bit of time and effort before you just walk in. You can't walk in blindly, but at the same time, you can't wait till you know everything. You'll never know everything. Yeah, right? yeah. 
Um, and, and honestly, clients appreciate that, that candid efficiency of like, Hey, I just don't know this. Let me give somebody a call. Yeah. Yeah. And that you have the team to call, right? Like, I don't know, but I work with um, a team of experts that can help get the answer. And then that's okay to say sometimes, whereas is maybe some agents think they want to have all the answers. And so if they're not going to be able to answer something, they just won't even go there. Right. Uh, versus I, I agree the candid um, approach of, you know, I, I don't know that, but I can find out for you. And, and then they know you're not just trying to maybe sell them on something and, and say what they want to hear, um, but more um, giving them the truth and, and finding out the facts for him. Um, let me go back to, you know, you said a, a year and then a, a year in is when you really feel like you took off fully and had the best success. What would you pinpoint as your pivotal point there? Like what changed um, the future for you on that? So probably about two months before that year hit, right? So I was about 12 months into the business. Um, but about two months prior to that, I started really reflecting on myself, thinking like, okay, I'm, I'm putting in all this work, but I'm getting mm -hmm. these kind of results. And it wasn't matching up. Mm -hmm. And so I, I called a couple of mentors. I mean, I, I do talk with several different people, but um, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Trey Honeycutt and Stephen E because they're so responsive and so helpful. And I've, I've had many conversations with them. And I said, look, tell me the truth. Tell me really what it is that I'm doing. So we analyzed what I was doing. I found that I felt I was working, but I wasn't really working. If you really, mm -hmm. right, like when you're making dials, if you're dialing for 30 minutes out of the 60 minutes and you're technically working us 30 minutes, right? Yeah. So it was yep. that kind of reality check that I had to understand. Um, so I applied that with some of the mentorship. And then he also said to me, he said, look, you're really limiting yourself. You know, you're, you're, you're focusing just on final expense mostly. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, I've got a lucrative market um, that I can tap into, whether it's through leads or word of mouth. I work a lot of referral markets, you yep. know, you can do business, you can ask for more. Um, and so when I brought a level of proficiency to the table, with that referral market, doing good business, and then being very honest, it kind of all came together. Mm -hmm. right? About a year into all this, and I wish I had done this three months into it, but I didn't, and that's fine. Everything took off, exponential. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, really using uh, all the tools in your tool belt, right? Like I, I like to say, you have this license, and uh, when they told you you were limiting yourself, like, well, no, I'm a life insurance agent. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. But what we don't realize is that we have many things as a life insurance agent that we can offer for our client um, and find solutions for, for a lot of different areas. And so um, that's fantastic advice. And, and I'm, I'm glad to hear you tapped into those mentors because that's what FFL is all about, right? It is, is having a team of people to talk to and pour into you and help you get where they've been, where they're going. Um, and, and so that's awesome. And talk to me a little bit, Evan, you do, if I understand correctly, pretty much all virtual now, right? Right. And so, you have the same amount of success virtually. So, I mean, part of that was my discovery phase, right? And figuring mm -hmm. out like what works best for me in person. I, I tried the telesale thing. I tried the instant live transfer. Like I, I really wanted to try everything mm -hmm. part because if I'm training other agents, you know, I want to be able to know what that's like. Yep. Uh, for me, virtual worked out really well. So that comes, oh, I'll be honest with you, every type of appointment has its pros and cons. Yeah. Me virtual works very well because I'm a big efficiency person. So when I get no showed in person, that's a huge inefficiency to me. And, yeah. and I, you know, I've got to figure out how I can, how I can reduce this inefficiency. So uh, virtual me was the best, was the best because if there's a no show or a reschedule, I can either fill it with another person immediately, or I can get back to what I need to be doing. Yeah. And fill it. And now virtual to me, the, the pro on, on that one, the reason why I like it so much um, is because I can share my screen, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I have instant access to everybody and everything. I've even literally been emailing um, Lauren and Charlotte at AMS or SRS um, while I was in an appointment. Yeah. And the funny thing is about 10 minutes later during my appointment, I have an answer back. So yeah. that's just yet another resource, right? I couldn't do that in person, in, in person or, or telesale. Yeah, let me step out and make a call really fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm typing, to, to those guys and are like, awesome. hey, tell me about this. And then as I'm filling in something else, I'm getting an answer. Back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't even tell my client, I'm like, hold on, I just got the answer. And I'll, I'll look at my screen and read it to them. And they, they love that stuff. But, you know, I think um, you can connect with people in person the best, but I think on virtual, it's, it's second to, to best. Yeah. It's really close, you know, because you can, you can see each other's face, you can read the body language and, and all that nonverbal communication comes through on, on virtual. Yeah. So you, you actually do like a zoom or share your screen so they can see you face to face and you find that you're able to build trust and, and gain confidence from your clients. Um, just as easy using annuities and IULs that you would be in person. 
I do, you know, it still comes down to the basics. I don't care if you're coming in for, you know, a 75 year old with small final expense or you're, you're rolling over several six figures. Like it still comes down to connecting with the person, building that rapport, act finding through needs analysis, you know, things like that, but figuring out like where the gaps, because you're the expert, they don't know. They don't even know what an index annuity is sometimes, for example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can you give me just a few lines on, um, we'll wrap up here in just a minute, but give me a few lines on what you use to um, pique people's interest and specifically annuities I want to find out about from you. Um, what, what kind of questions are you asking? What are some examples that you would give some new agents if they're wanting to figure out how to uncover those opportunities with the people they're sitting with? Okay, sure. Yeah. So like I go through the initial stuff, the, you know, date of birth. Do you have mm -hmm. kids? Are you married? Do you have a house? All the fact finding. And as I'm listening to that and I'm, I'm uh, annotating all the facts from them, I'm hearing some, some liabilities. They have kids, they're married, single income. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, the, and I ask, you know, well, what other assets do you have? Because let's face it, in the end, life insurance is all about financial security, right? Mm -hmm. If you have life insurance, but you're investing for your future, well, you, you're, you're, it's all at risk. So I said, what else do you have that's just like life insurance? For example, if you were to die today, what's the family going to lean on financially? So they would lean on that 401k or they lean on an IRA. I said, well, you mentioned an IRA. Well, how much are we talking about? You know, because that might reduce your need for life insurance. They said, well, I've got 250,000 in, in an IRA, but no life insurance. And then, and so you can factor that in and say, well, you know, are you concerned about how much was lost over the last two years alone and how volatile yeah. things are now? The answer is yes. Almost every single, well, it has to be yes. Cause you know, nobody, you know, so Mm -hmm. Right there is your shoe. And I said, well, if I can show you a way that you can never lose. And I use myself as an example. I said, you know, when I came out of the military four years ago, I had IRAs, I had a TSP mm -hmm. and I was so nervous about losing everything like I did in 2008. I said, so when I discovered the fixed index annuity, I said, I haven't lost a dime in five years, yeah. not a single penny in the market. And they, that right there usually catches people. Mm -hmm. So certain phrases, you ask questions, but the phrase that I usually say is, I personally haven't lost a penny in the market in five years because of my index annuity. Yeah. They're like, what? what is that? And so that usually goes right into the illustration. I said, well, if you got five minutes, I can show you right now. And that mm -hmm. goes back to the proficiency piece, right? You better be able to run that illustration right in front of them because that's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and what about for the agents who um, want to dig in and can't, um, maybe they got to get to another appointment or they're not equipped to run an illustration in home. Um, did you ever lean on other resources till you learned like which product you're picking in the home on the spot? Cause for our veteran agents and, and you know, uh, very um, practiced agents, they can, they can, they can pivot after the end of their life appointment and they can show them some examples, but what, what would you recommend to an agent who wants to do this, but maybe can't, uh, isn't equipped enough yet to do that? So, uh, you know, everybody has time to prepare before an appointment. So I, I suggest starting simple, right? Um, I, I got with uh, SRS and I figured what are the best annuities out there and why? And so mm -hmm. I picked a couple of products, you know, I picked a couple of carriers and a couple of their products and I learned those. So at least I had something. And let's mm -hmm. say, for example, I'm going to show a particular index annuity. I can run that one illustration. I can't run them all, but I can yeah. run that one. I run yeah. one, it's a good one. And I pique their interest with that. They see those numbers and they're like, Wow. I said, well, listen, I've got to get to another appointment, but let's set up a Zoom appointment where I can bring this right on screen with you later tonight. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I've already got them visually seeing my numbers. Gotcha. Right. So you're just getting really good at like, let's say um, one specific product that kind of encompasses the FIA and you just show them the, the factual numbers. You're not digging into the whole annuity in that appointment. You're just piquing their interest with, with the power of the, you know, one page illustration and then coming back and, and giving them the best solution for themselves and booking another appointment from that. Yeah. And, yeah. and usually yeah. when you book a second appointment with somebody, so for me, you know, a lot of times you want to close on that first appointment uh, for obvious reasons, because when you leave 50% of it's going to go away sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. But when you get into these kind of appointments where you're talking about rolling over a person's financial security, um, if you have established that credibility and that rapport up front, you're not going to lose that second appointment yeah. because it's yeah. for their own benefit. So that gives me another opportunity to get in front of them. And now I can sit back and think about everything I thought about. I said, so when I get on that second appointment, I said, hey, listen, you mentioned, I know you have two kids. And you said, boy, if I had only known this back then, well, you know, your kids are back then. I said, mm -hmm. so when we take a look at a juvenile IUL, have you ever considered that? And of course they're like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Great, I can show you that on screen too. Yeah, yeah. But you 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 have that break to get your thoughts together, uh, tap into the resources, figure out what products you can then go back and fill some holes in, in your clients' um, needs. Right, so you can expand on that appointment and pick up additional. I've actually picked up their... Um, 
I've done an appointment where at the end of the appointment, they're like, you know, my mother has final expense or life insurance needs. I'm like, great. And so we jumped, brought her in on the Zoom that night. You know, that's awesome. Chicago or whatever it is. And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with Zoom, that's the other thing is I don't, I'm not restricted to my geographic. Uh, yeah. Right? So yeah, you can pick up a lot of referral business. That's what I do. I ask for a lot of referral business. I mm-hmm. establish a lot of credibility. And then I do follow-ups all the time. Annual reviews, maybe biannual where I'm asking them, how's everything going? And then if mm-hmm. you know, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, leave me with one, one tip for a new agent starting out. Preparation and don't wait. If you prepare ahead of time, you go in with confidence and you have a level of knowledge, uh, lean on your resources. Um, SRS is a great resource. Your carriers are a great resource and lean on your mentors. Mm-hmm. If you prepare ahead of time, you go in, you have that confidence, you have your, your needs analysis where you have some structure. Can't really can't go wrong. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Evan, for sharing. I look forward to working with you more in the future.